Hello friends. So today we can discuss the first four problems from the latest ad coder beginner contest 177. So let's start. The first problem states that Takashi is meeting with Aoki, in which they have planned to meet at a place which is D meter away from which Takahashi's house is. So Takashi, let's assume, like lives somewhere, and they both like plan to meet at a place which is D meter away from Takahashi's like like where Takahashi lives. and they will meet in 3 minutes from now so like they have decided okay we will meet 3 minutes from now get to that position now takashi will leave his house now and go straight to that place at a speed of s meter per minute so he will move or he has a speed of this s meter per minute so will he arrive in time the question is like will he arrive in time now you can easily see here is okay now if takashi is like having this distance d and he is moving with this distance so distance upon speed is time so if you just find out okay this is distance this is speed okay this will give us time in how many minutes takashi will reach that distance if how many like he will cover this distance if this distance is less than or equal to t then okay we are fine with it then then he can reach out this distance but actually in this we are dividing so we will uh, when we are dividing d divided by s it will be like in some points it can be like 0 0 0 0 0 and like in such way most of the times the compiler like uh, lost the very last bits or last values of this multiplication so it will can cause error and the answer can like get disturbed so what you are preferred to do here is just take this s on this side which is like this t into s this will actually act you will also get distance so what does this term will give you if takahashi will move at this speed for 3 minutes how much distance he will move if this distance is greater than equal to d then he will actually always reach there na so like if my speed is this and i will move with this speed with 3 minutes then i can know how much distance i can travel in this 3 minutes now if this distance i can travel is greater than or equal to d then obviously i can reach there so that's the simple because in this i can do not lose any values in division so i can use this logic so that's the first problem i will take down to the code now code is just very simple take the input of d t n s uh, distance and then multiply t n s if this a value is greater than d then obviously we can reach there else we cannot reach there that's the first question now let's move on to the second question second question is you are given two string s and t and you can change some characters in s such that you want that t should be a substring of s substring man means that it is a constant continuous stretch and that uh, like all the characters of t should be there in s and they should be continuous so we want to change as minimum number of characters as possible such that t becomes a such substring of s and you have to change some characters in s so how many least number of characters do you want to change okay now as you can see in this x axis is a substring of this because this lies here okay now because you can see that the constraints are very small it's just like 1000 so you can do this like uh, code in 10 to the power 6 so it you, it can be done in o of n square so what you can easily do here is you can iterate over this s and t and it can be done in brute force way so what's the simple logic here is because t just assume that t is some window t is some window so i'll tell you how how let's assume that this is some s is some value a a a a b b b now and uh, the the string t is a b b now what you can do take this as a window and match this window with this how many matchings are there for every matching we will check that okay now how many mis mismatching are there because if i match this with this substring then we have to be complete match so if there is a complete match between them how many changes we are required okay in this match this not this not so we have to two changes to make this as a substring okay this is the first value then we will shift this uh, like window to here in this also we have to do two matches now i will shift down to here this is a and then b b so in this also i have to just do one match because b is there a is there in this only one change is there so i have to do one match 
so this has decreased because you have to find out the minimum number of changes then we will come to this it is abb it is abb so i don't have to do anything it is just zero so that's how we will move a trade may move this window over this whole s string and then we'll check check that for every window how many changes we have to do so i'll move down to the code now so this is the code in which what we'll do total is the total number of steps i have made a very large because there are 10 to the power 4 uh, characters in a string s so the maximum changes cannot exceed 10 to the power 4 so i have written down a total of 10 to the power 5 because it's a very large number and we have to do we will always go less than 10 to the power 5 okay and you have to find out the minimum number okay now what we'll do we will iterate over from the for this s and this current will tell us for this current window how many changes will do now we will iterate over this current window and we will check that okay so how we will iterate i plus j so i will tell you how j is the value for this window okay and so let's assume that i make a pointer here which is i and j is the pointer at this point now how we can match this because this window we will iterate over this string easily but if you want to iterate over this string this is actually i plus j why because j moves from 0 till this point and this is just this position is i this is actually i plus j i plus j plus 1 i plus j plus 2 why you can observe this because you have shifted this position to this position okay if like this is one window and you are taking this window at the same at the starting point then you match these three positions now you have shifted this window at this position so you have to match this with the shift is position how many position you have shifted i positions so for i position you have to add i plus now in this string that's what we are doing so but we will ensure that this i plus j should be inside this s if this goes outside this s okay now this window is exceeding so let's assume that okay we are forming a window of 3 now we are matching this with this okay now we are checking that okay now our window has exceeded this size now if i take any other more window it will always exceed this whole size so if at whatever index of whatever window we find out that okay it is exceeding we will break out that point so that's what we are doing if at any of this point i plus j or this window will exceed the total s boundary then we will make our flag equal to 1 and break out which means that okay now we cannot make any window for every window if this condition is not true which means that everything is inside the window we will check that okay if t of j is not equal to s of i plus j then because this character doesn't match we will increment our current now we will check that for every position every window after doing this every iteration if we are inbound total is the minimum of total and the current for every window and we will output the total 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 is the total minimum of every window we have seen how many changes we have to do so that's the logic for the second question let's move on to the third question now third question is good in which you are given n numbers and you have to find out sum of all ai into aj pairs what does this mean so like there are n numbers you have to you have you can make pairs such that for every i you can make a pair with j and what you will do you will do a summation over all those pairs now the question in this is you can draw this out and it will become more clear so and also it is written that the the summation can become very large so you have to do a mod with 10 to the 9 plus 7 now what you can see here is let's assume that you have some numbers which is like a1 a2 a3 i'll do it for 4 a4 okay now what we'll do for pairing a1 should be pair with a2 then we'll do us add a1 is again paired with a3 and then addition and then a3 or oh sorry a1 is again paired with a4 now like there will be more terms but you can observe this pattern from here because a1 can be taken out common from it it will be like a2 plus a3 and a4 so what does this mean actually this is the prefix sum for every term we will find out the if we know the prefix sum of all its numbers which are except this number so for a2 a we will do a pair with a3 and a4 so if we do a prefix sum of this for a2 for a1 if i know the prefix sum of this then what can i do i will just take a1 into the prefix sum of other numbers 
so if i do a mod of this whole mod then what can i do i will do this a term this a like ai term mod m into like this prefix term prefix term this mod and do a whole mod of this why because actually this prefix term will not exceed like i can store this prefix sum without doing this mod because this is just 10 to power like 10 to power 9 and you can easily add them up but when you do a multiplication then only it can exceed so at this term only we can exceed so first find out the prefix sums starting from back because it's actually not a prefix sum it's just suffix sums because we are suffixing like we are adding the summation for this term this term this term and so on but actually in the code i have written prefix sum sorry it is, it is suffix sum so i'll take down to the code part so for n numbers take the input of those numbers and then find a prefix sum for the n plus one numbers i have actually put in n plus one because the last number can be zero because like the for finding out the summation we will find out okay the last number is zero then the, the next number is a4 then the next number is a4 plus a3 then a4 a3 a2 and so on so that's what i've done finding out the prefix sum and then the answer is because we are doing modular arithmetic here what you can easily do here is just write down these three function i have also made a video so you can also watch it out in which i have explained this functions in which you just made three function mod add and multiply mod is just do a modular of the number you send in send in this addition is you just do a modular addition of a and b what how you'll do mod of a plus mod of b and do a whole mod and same for multiplication now if you want to add so how you, uh, what you want to add actually for every multiplication prefix sum you do a multiplication of this prefix sum and this ai number and then add this number to the whole answer so how you'll do you will do a multiplication of ai and the prefix sum i plus one because if you take i is number then you do a prefix sum of i plus one and then the multiplication of this you will add this to the answer and i as you can see i've used this function multiplication and add because if i use this function then i don't have to take like take care about how where to place m and that is very simple you don't have to worry about that so that's the logic for the third question let's move on to the fourth question the fourth question says that there are n people called person 1 to person n and then you know m facts about those person so person ai and person bi are friends so this is a fact and then you are given multiple facts now what you actually have to do here is now there is no friendship that cannot be divided into m like m given facts so what you have to do is takashi is evil and wants to divide the n people which you are given into some group such that every person has no friends in his or her group so you actually are given some like description about which friend and which friend are friends okay and then you have to divide all those friends into some groups such that in every group no friend should be present i'll tell you more with the example let's draw some out uh, so let's assume that there are in the first example there are five friends okay one two three four five and then there is a connection between one two three four what do as a connection they are friends three four are friends and five one are friends so like five one are friends so now you can see that okay these three are friends and these two are friends now if i want to make a group some like such that no two friends are there in the same group okay, if i put five and two in the same group like if i want to make some groups and I, if i put five and two in the same group then they are friends actually you know? so i cannot put five and two in the same group so like let's assume i put five in one group then i will put two in some another group now i can put four in this group with five but i cannot put three in this group so i have to i can put three here now there is one person left one i cannot put one here because one is a friend of five i cannot put one here because one is a friend of two i will put one in this another group and then this will form out that we we should know three groups such that i can divide all these members into different groups such that no group has same friends now how you can do this now the main trick to analyze or see in this question here is let's assume that i have 
like these are forming some components or like some components and then if i take some friend from one component i have to take one member from every component like if there are like n components i can take every member from one component and like make a group of them then i will take another member from all the components and i will make a group of them how much how many groups i can make you can observe that okay now after making some group some components can get uh, exhausted like okay one component is of size 5 and one component is size is size of 2 i will make one component of both of them so okay then i will make another component of both of them okay now this component has three more members left and this component has zero members left now i cannot make this three friends into a same group i have to make every new group for this every new person so what does this mean actually i have to know what is the size of every component and what is the maximum size of the component among all of those components so that because what is the maximum size will tell us okay this maximum size is the maximum number of components or maximum number of groups we need to form because every person need to go in a different group and maximum uh, number will tell us okay maximum number is the maximum number of groups we need to form so that's what we have to do we will just need to find out the sizes of all the components and maximum size of the component so how you can find it out you can just run a dfs on all the graph and then like like run a dfs on this one okay mark this out and you can store out the component size of every uh, like every component and then in the end check that if this comp they, they form that like this is one component after finding out the size of every component you will store that whether this is the maximum among all of them just find out the maximum among all of the components i'll tell you more with this code so the code is this is also very simple i'm just running a dfs first take the input of a and b the n and m m facts it did over m facts make an hnc list of push hnc list of a push b b and a subtract one from it because we are doing it for zero indexing then i will iterate over from zero to n because there are n friends if this friend is not visited we will run a dfs on this friend and we will mark out the whole component starting with this friend and this dfs will return the component size and we will do a maximum among this component size and we will return the maximum now how will this dfs return the component size we have made this essential list and the visited array boolean array then we will uh, and also this maxi value now dfs will start from the value which we have given now answer is zero now what we'll do if this like this uh, node which we have sent it is not visited we'll first make it visited increment the answer because okay now we have visited we have incremented one because like this is one component we have started our dfs from this first because this is in the component we have to increase our answer by one and we have increased my answer by one and then we will iterate over its children and what we will do we will for every children if this children is included we will make this children true and then answer is also in plus plus so for every children we will iterate towards every children and find out okay how many nodes are there in every children in every subtree of this children how many nodes are there so answer plus equal to dfs of all its children and answer will include all the children size or number of nodes in every children and then return answer and if and we will also marking out all this all the nodes which we are visiting in this visited array such that we don't like revisit every node again and such that we will only mark out the whole component in one dfs if i find out or visited to next node and if it is visited we don't run this because that component is already checked and then we will find out the size of this whole component and return the size of this component using this function and find out the maximum among all those components and return the answer that's the logic for the fourth question i hope you understand all the four questions more videos are coming thank you for watching this video i'll see you in the next one keep coding bye